நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. Warm greetings to all. May all live well. Many of my subscribers request me to explain Karaho Bhavanasti and in this premium video I'm going to explain about Karaho Bhavanasti and I'm going to clear all your doubts. I have already published some videos explaining this concept succinctly. I have published videos regarding Karaho Bhavanasti as general videos on YouTube and also as premium videos. I can very well understand from your comments that many of my followers still have doubts like when Karaho Bhavanasti will function, in which criteria it will function. First of all, let me explain what is Karaho Bhavanasti. You know very well that each planet has many Karakas. Each planet has some significance. In a similar fashion, every Baba also has some Karakas. They signify some Karakas. When a planet delivers a particular Karaka, resides in a Baba, which is responsible for delivering the same Karaka, there is an opposite reaction happening and the planet that resides in that particular Baba spoils the Baba. The title of the concept itself is self-explanatory. Karaho Bhava Nasti When the Karaka of the planet and Karaka of the Baba matches, the house gets spoiled in the natal chart provided the planet delivering the Karaka reside in the Bhava delivering the same Karaka. Karaho Bhavanasti is a principle which is often discussed to explain why despite having a strong planet in a key house, the house fails to give results. In brief words, when the planet delivering the Karaka resides in the house which is responsible for delivering the same Karaka, the house gets spoiled. A planet which is responsible for delivering a particular bhava residing in a house which also signifies the same karaka, then the bhava will be spoiled. This is a general rule. I always reiterate something regarding the rules of astrology. While there are rules, there are also exceptions. I would like to explain certain exceptions. If Saturn the planet which signifies longevity resides in the 8th house which also signifies longevity. Saturn does not spoil the longevity of the native as per Karaho Bhavanasti concept. Rather, it gives good longevity to the native. Before explaining the Karaho Bhavanasti concept further, let me explain first of all the chief Karakas of the planet and of the house. Let me start explaining first of all from the sun. Sun is the significator of father. It is Atma Karaka. As Jiva Karaka, it signifies father and Jata Karaka, sun signifies paternal properties and everything related to father. Moon is the planet that signifies mother as Jiva Karaka. We call moon as Matru Karaka, Mano Karaka. And as Jata Karaka, moon signifies milk, white colored products, water, etc. Mars is the planet that signifies brother as Jiva Karaka. Let me repeat the points. 
Sun signifies father, moon signifies mother, Mars signifies brother, Mercury signifies maternal uncle, intelligence. Mercury is the planet that signifies intelligence. Mercury is called as Vidya Karaka. As Jeeva Karaka, it signifies maternal uncle. Jupiter is the planet that signifies children as Jeeva Karaka and wealth as a Jeeva Karaka. Jupiter is the planet that is responsible for delivering money and children. Venus is Kalatra Karaka. Venus signifies women, wife and of course it also signifies luxuries, comforts, money, lavish lifestyle, luxurious vehicles, house, women. Venus is the planet that signifies wife as Shiva Karaka. Saturn signifies the servant as Jeeva Karaka and as a Jeeva Karaka it signifies work, profession. Saturn signifies the people who become servants to you, who serve you. Saturn signifies slavery, slaves as Jeeva Karaka. Of course Saturn signifies longevity. Rahu as Jeeva Karaka signifies the father of the father, paternal grandparents. Ketu signifies maternal grandparents, that is maternal grandfather and grandmother. We will definitely see further about the significance of Rahu and Ketu in another video. Whatever I listed so far are the Karakas of the planets. I have listed out the Karakas of the nine planets. Now let me explain the Karakas of the 12 houses in the natural zodiac. First of all, let me explain the ascendant house. Sun is Atma Karaka because sun signifies Atma, the soul. Sun is the head of the solar family. And every entity in the solar family exists because of the sun. Sun is the head of the solar family. And anything in the solar family cannot exist without sun. If sun does not exist, nothing will exist in the solar family. It means when we don't have a head, we don't have a brain to activate us or to make us function, we are nothing. We are a collection of thoughts. When I say I, it doesn't mean my hands. It does not mean my legs, rather it means my mind. Because mind is the one that controls everything, our thoughts, our feelings, everything related to our mind. We don't address or we don't point out our hands or legs when I say, or when we say, I. Sun is the one that signifies thoughts, atma and mind. Sun is the significator of Atma, Sun is the significator of Lagna. The second house that signifies wealth and family is signified by Jupiter. Therefore Jupiter which signifies the wealth becomes a significator of the second house which is responsible for delivering wealth. The third house is the house that signifies courage Vigor and brother. Therefore, Mars becomes a significator of the third house. Mars, which signifies brother, also signifies the third house because the third house signifies the younger siblings. The fourth house can be signified by more than one planet definitely because the fourth house signifies mother, luxuries, vehicles, comforts, etc. The fourth house also signifies education of the person. The fourth house signifies mother, own comfort, education, luxuries. Venus is the planet that signifies the house and vehicles. There are three planets that signify the Karaka of the fourth house. Moon is the planet that signifies mother. Suppose if you want to check about the house and vehicles, Venus is the planet that signifies this particular Karaka of the fourth house. 
and mercury is the planet that signifies education which is one of the karakas of the fourth house mercury signifies education of the fourth house therefore moon venus and mercury or the planets that signify the respective karaka of the fourth house the jiva karaka that is signified by the fifth house is children the fifth house is putrasthana and jupiter is the planet that signifies children and it also signifies fifth house jupiter is the karaka planet of the fifth house the significant jiva karaka of the fifth house children is delivered by jupiter well now let us see about the sixth house the sixth house signifies deaths diseases and enemies mars and saturn or the planets that signify the karaka of the sixth house which ever is not needed in the life of a person or signified by saturn and mars we cannot categorize that saturn signifies a particular karaka of the sixth house and mars signifies a particular karaka saturn and mars are the planets that signify the karakas of the sixth house in general the seventh house is signified by venus since it is kalatra karaka venus is the planet that signifies wife The eighth house signifies longevity, which is the most significant karaka among all the karakas in the eighth house. I have already mentioned this house as an exception. The eighth house also signifies litigation, dispute, shame, deaths, diseases, enemies, falling from a higher altitude. This eighth house is also the house which signifies certain karagas that are really unnecessary for human life. And here too both the planet Saturn and Mars become the significators. Mars is the most significant planet that signifies the sixth house and Saturn is the most significant planet that delivers the karaka of the eighth house. both the planets become the significators of 6th and the 8th house the 9th house is pitrusthana which is also the natural significator of father the 9th house can also be signified by jupiter because 9th house is the house of bhagya jupiter signifies the second house 9th house and also 11th house because jupiter is the significator of wealth the karaka planet of the second house ninth house and 11th house is jupiter in terms of wealth the second house ninth house and the 11th house or the houses which tell us how much a man earns in which way he earns and what he does with the earned money The second house, ninth house and 11th houses are called Mahadana houses and these houses are signified by Jupiter. Having said this Jupiter can deliver the karaka of the second house, ninth house and 11th house in terms of money. Since sun is a significator of father which is also called as atma karaka, sun is the karagatva planet of the first house. and also the ninth house sun and jupiter or the karaka planets of the ninth house you know why i said saturn is the karaka planet of the sixth house what is the reason because saturn is the planet that signifies serving as a servant to others the sixth house signifies serving to others thus saturn becomes the karaka planet of the sixth house saturn also signifies deaths diseases and enemies the foremost significant planet that delivers karaka of the sixth house is mars and the second planet that 
delivers the character of the sixth house is Saturn. Since Saturn is the planet that will help the native to serve others or to work as a servant to others, Saturn signifies the Karaka of the sixth house. Well, I have completed explaining about the ninth house. Sun and Jupiter are the planets that deliver the Karaka of the ninth house with respect to father and wealth. The planet Sun and Saturn deliver the Karaka of the 10th house. Saturn is the planet that delivers Karaka of serving to others as a servant. And what about Sun? Sun helps the native to become a boss where others serve to the native. Even Jupiter can signify the 10th house. Jupiter signifies the 9th. 10th and also 11th house. Because only through this house you are earning money. Since the 10th house is a house of profession, Sun and Saturn can deliver the Karaka of the 10th house. And since Jupiter signifies the money, it can deliver the Karaka of the 10th house. The ninth and 10th houses are called as Dharmasthana and Karmasthana respectively. The most significant planet that delivers the Karaka of the 10th house is Sun. The profession is signified by both the planet Sun and Saturn. I have already explained this in many of my videos earlier. Sun will deliver you a profession where you can stay as a boss and there will be others to serve you. Saturn is a planet which will make you a servant to earn your wages. Either way, Sun and Saturn become the Karaka planets for delivering the profession. The primary goal of doing a profession is earning money and thus Jupiter delivers the Karaka of the 10th house with respect to money. However, Sun and Saturn are the planets that are relevant to deliver the Karaka of the 10th house. Jupiter is the most significant planet in delivering the Karaka of the 2nd house, 9th house and 11th house in terms of money. The fundamental logic is try to understand the Karaka delivered by the house and check which planet is responsible for delivering the Karaka. This is how you have to match the Karaka planet and Karaka of the house. Well, let us come to the 11th house. The 11th house signifies the brothers, elder siblings. The 11th house is a house of gains. The planets Mars and Jupiter signify the 11th house. With respect to gains earned, money earned, Jupiter delivers the Karaka of the 11th house. And with respect to Karaka brother, Mars delivers the Karaka of the 11th house. However, since this is a house of gains, Jupiter becomes a significant planet in delivering the Karaka of this house. Now let us see about the 12th house. It is the house of expenses. Saturn is the planet that delivers the Karaka of the 12th house. Wherever there is loss, Saturn signifies it. Venus can also signify the 12th house because Venus is the planet that is responsible for making expenses. Venus is the planet that signifies the Karaka of the 12th house. Because people spend money to live a luxurious life. People spend money to enjoy things around them. Definitely Saturn has connection with the 6th house, 8th house and 12th house. Depending on the event delivered by the house, you have to choose the Karaka planet. Venus will make the native to spend money like water in order to have fun in their life to enjoy life. 
Thus Venus delivers the Karaka of the 12th house. Now let me explain the concept of Karaho Bhavanasti. When the planets delivering the Karaka of a particular house reside in the same house, we call it as Karaho Bhavanasti. When sun resides in the ascendant house itself, where the house signifies Atma and sun also signifies Atma, is it Karaho Bhavanasti? When sun resides in the ascendant house, does it invoke Karaho Bhavanasti? No. This is how it is said in the original dictum. And when Jupiter resides in the second house, is it said to be Karaho Bhavanasti? Don't take whatever is said in the original dictum as it is. I would like to bring my concepts of Subhatva and Pabhatva even with Karaho Bhavanasti. When the Karaka planet is Subhatva in any house, then it does not deliver Karaho Bhavanasti. At this point of time, I would like to share one information. Please don't consider the rules such as when Jupiter is alone, it gives a lot of problems. Many stories are cooked like when Jupiter resides in the second house without any conjunction, it will make a man a beggar. Don't believe all these stories. In order to predict whether a man earns or not, you have to check the second house. You have to definitely make predictions based on the second house, ninth house and eleventh house. Needless to say, you have to definitely check the tenth house as well. Based on one rule, you cannot make any complete prediction in astrology. Having said this, there is a proverb in Tamil, Andanan Tanitan Indral Avadigal Metta Undu, which means when Jupiter resides alone in a particular Bhava, there will be a lot of problems. This rule cannot be applied in all the charts. When Jupiter resides in the second house, it is definitely considered to be auspicious. Further, if Jupiter is in conjunction with Venus, it delivers a lot of benefits. Jupiter should not become Pabhatva in the second house. When a planet is Subhatva, it becomes an exception to Karaho Bhavanasti. When a planet is Pabhatva, then Karaho Bhavanasti will affect more. When the planet is Pabhatva, then the Karaho Bhavanasti will function more. This is a proven fact. The very same planet, if it is Subhatva, then the Karaka is not spoiled. Having said this, if Jupiter resides in the second house, Pabhatva, it will definitely affect the wealth of the person. In any house, when Jupiter is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, it will be spoiled. A natural benefit like Jupiter should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. A natural benefit Jupiter should not be under the aspect of Saturn or in conjunction with Saturn or in conjunction with Rahu. Jupiter can be in conjunction with Ketu because Ketu has a character to grow everything. Kena Yoga is nothing but when Jupiter is in conjunction with Ketu. Jupiter will definitely lose its status and it cannot deliver its responsibility which is to give wealth, family, when it is in conjunction with Rahu, especially within 8 degrees. Jupiter will be definitely eclipsed by Rahu and it will lose its strength to deliver family or money. Having said this, when Jupiter resides in the second house, Karaho Bhavanasi will not function. If Jupiter is Pabhatva in the second house, it definitely will not deliver wealth or family. When Mars resides Pabhatva in the third house, it will definitely spoil the status of the younger brother. 
there will be either loss due to younger brother or there will be a loss of younger brother. I repeat, when Mars resides Pabatwa in the third house, there will be loss of brother or certain loss will incur due to the younger brother. These sorts of effects will be delivered when Mars remains Pabatwa in the third house. I myself stand as a perfect example to explain this point. I am Nado of Gemini Ascendant and in my natal chart Mars resides in the third house. Mars resides in its very friendly house Leo. But Mars is under the direct aspect of Saturn. During the Dasha of Mars, I lost my younger brother in an accident whom I considered to be my soul. This is one of the events I predicted in my life beforehand based on the astrological concept Karaho Bhavanasti. I have written about these in my articles. You can take a look at those articles. I will definitely have not lost my younger brother if the very same Mars is under the aspect of Jupiter or Venus or waxing moon or in conjunction with any of these planets. I am a NATO of Gemini ascendant. Mars resides in the third house. Saturn resides in the ninth house in my natal chart. Saturn resides in Aquarius. And Mars receives the aspect of Saturn. Since Mars resides in the third house, which signifies the younger brother, the third house was affected by Karaho Bhavanasi. And Mars is aspected by Saturn and Mars has become more Pabatva. During the first phase of Dasha of Mars, I lost my younger brother. And in the later phase of Dasha of Mars, Mars started doing its sixth house effects, which is an accident, as I am a Gemini ascendant. Mars resides in Leo and aspects the sixth house to the ascendant, which is Scorpio. The concept of Karaho Bhavanasi applies to all the natal charts. There are crows of people where all the Vedic astrology rules apply 100%. I lost my younger brother before 18 years in an accident. My brother died before 17 or 18 years. I had made a lot of research of the natal chart of my younger brother before his death. You will be quite surprised if I say something regarding the event. I and my father discussed about the natal chart of all my brothers before my younger brother expired. I have three younger brothers. I and my father made some discussion regarding the longevity of each brother. As per the natal chart, we were expecting a bad event to happen. This is why I insist that when Karho Bhavanasti planet is Pabatva, it definitely affects the Bhava. Based on the strength of the Pabatva, the Karaho Bhavanasi has its own effects. In case if Pabatva of Mars was less in my natal chart, I would have faced some loss due to my brother. Indeed, as soon as the Dasha of Mars started, I faced some loss due to my brother. Since the longevity of my younger brother was less, he got affected. In case the longevity of my younger brother was very good as per his natal chart, the whole situation would have changed. I would have faced some loss due to my younger brother, but my younger brother would have not died. This is how you have to understand Karaho Bhavanasti. In one of my YouTube videos, I have even explained the death of a police official who died because of Corona. Being an astrologer, I was aware that predicting the death merely by checking the natal chart of the official, a particular person, 
will not yield accurate prediction results. A senior higher official in the police department approached me to know whether his junior official, who was working for him, will get relieved from corona or will succumb to corona. In order to make predictions, I did not merely check the natal chart of the junior police official. Rather, I checked the natal charts of the wife of the junior police and even the children of the junior police. After checking the natal charts of the junior police official and his family members, I predicted that he would not be able to live after a particular date. I expressed politely that he will succumb to corona. The very same night, the junior police official died. Therefore, in order to choose between whether there will be loss due to brother or there will be loss of a brother, you have to definitely check the natal chart of yours, of course your brother's natal chart and of course the family members. You have to check the longevity of the brother. If you have more brothers, you can check the natal charts of all your brothers to check the longevity of each. And of course, not to miss yours as well. If an event is going to happen in your family, definitely it will reflect in the natal chart of the family members. Because in my family, my brother is a son of my parents, my father and my mother. And is an elder brother for my youngest brother. And he is a younger brother to me. His death will definitely reflect in his natal chart. And of course in the natal charts of my parents. And of course in the natal chart of my younger brother. And even in mine. An event will reflect in the natal charts of all the family members. It was very obvious that the planetary position in the natal chart of each of the family members reflected the loss of my brother. My father definitely had the planetary position, the supporting Dasha to lose his son and I have the planetary position to lose my younger brother and my youngest brother certainly had the planetary position to lose his elder brother. Every event that takes place in a family will definitely reflect in the natal charts of all the family members. I can help you by publishing a video regarding the natal chart of a guy who lost his father last week. My client, that guy, lost his father last week and while he was talking, he was continuously weeping. I'll definitely publish this as a video. A general video that shows how the loss of a father reflects in the natal chart of the sun. We can see how the astrological rules apply in the natal charts of the people and help us to make the best predictions. Isn't that a great wonder whether it is good or bad event that takes place in a family reflects in the natal chart of all the family members? I hope now you understand and you have a better idea about Karaho Bhavanasi. The third house signifies a younger sibling and Mars signifies brother. Having said all these, when Mars resides in the third house Pabatwa, it will definitely create Karaho Bhavanasi and it spoils the Karaka of the third house. When Mars is Pabatwa, it affects the Jiva Karaka. In case if Mars is Subhatva, then there will not be loss of brother, rather there will be loss due to brother. In order to make sure of the event, please check the natal charts of the respective family members. The fourth house signifies the mother and if moon resides in the fourth house, it is not said to be good to the status of the mother. In general, I used to give a tip that if Rahu resides in the fourth house, it will definitely affect the status of the mother. You know, when I lost my mother, I am native of Gemini Ascendant and the Lord of the fourth house is Mercury. Mercury is debilitated in my natal chart and has got cancellation of debility as well. 
Having said this, during the Dasha of Rahu and Antar Dasha of Mercury, I lost my mother. Every event in our life is predestined. Vedic astrology is a science where all the astrological concepts are proven. It is a pure science. The prediction goes wrong if only an astrologer makes a mistake in applying the astrological concepts or when an astrologer is not enough knowledgeable. During my Rahu Dasha and Mercury Antar Dasha, my mother expired since the Lord of the Fourth House has got Nietzsche Banga. Moon is the planet that signifies mother and the fourth house also signifies mother. Therefore, when moon resides in the fourth house, it should not be Pabatwa. When moon is Subatwa, it will not affect the status of the mother. I often reiterate the point while we make predictions regarding the moon. I insist a point that you have to assess the strength of the moon the light energy of the moon. You have to check whether the moon is heading towards Amavasya or heading towards Purnima. You can also take some extra efforts to predict uh, like uh, the strength of the moon, uh, whether it is going towards exaltation or whether it is going towards debilitation. In other words, you can check whether it is Arohana or Avrohana. I will definitely teach you all these during my online classes that I have started. When moon is Pabatwa in the fourth house, it definitely affects the status of the mother. You have to check the following points before making the final predictions. You have to check the light energy of the moon, whether it is heading towards Amavasya or heading towards Purnima. The second point is you have to check whether it is Arohana or Avarohana that is whether it is heading towards exaltation or debilitation. The third point is you have to check the connection of moon with malefics or benefics. In general, when there is Karaho Bhavanasti, it does not always affect the Jata Karaka of the Bhava. When moon resides Pabatva in the fourth house, you should not immediately assume that it will affect the education of the native. When Mercury resides in the fourth house based on the concept of Kendra Adipati Dosha, it delivers a situation where the native cannot get education at all. I have explained about this in my videos. When Venus resides in the 4th house, it gets directional strength and when Moon resides in the 4th house, it also gets directional strength. There are certain exceptions in order to make predictions regarding education. If Moon is Pabatwa, while it resides in the 4th house, it will definitely affect the Jiva Karaka, which is Mother. Let me explain the 5th house that signifies the children. When Jupiter, that signifies children, resides in the fifth house, it will not do any bad effects. It is indeed good to the native. Jupiter should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. Even if Jupiter is conjoined with Mars, it is okay. In some cases, Mars will not disturb Jupiter because Mars is the most friendly planet to Jupiter. However, Jupiter should not be in conjunction with the waning moon. If moon is dark, it will definitely create Karaho Bhavanasti. Jupiter should not be in conjunction with the moon which has no light energy or Saturn or Rahu. If Jupiter becomes Pabatva with the connection of any of these three planets, the native will face loss due to children or there will be loss of children. As I said, two possible predictions for Karaho Bhavanasti for Mars, like loss of brother or loss due to brother, the same way when Jupiter is Pabatva in 5th house, there will be loss due to children, due to son, or there will be loss of children. Here Jupiter should not be in conjunction with Amavasya moon or the moon which is heading towards Amavasya. 
the logic behind this is assessing the light energy of the moon if jupiter is in close conjunction let us say 8 degrees with rahu or saturn it will affect the jiva karaka child there will be agony due to child it will definitely affect the status of the child there will be loss of child or loss due to child there is a tamil proverb that says andanan tanithu nindral avadigal metta undu please don't believe such tamil proverbs if jupiter is in conjunction with waxing moon then it will not definitely invoke karaho bhavanasti there will not be loss of son loss of child there will not be worry due to child a malafic in the 6th house is considered to be good it is good when a natural malafic resides in a 3rd house or 6th house or 11th house or even 10th house it is good when saturn or mars or rahu resides in 3rd house or 6th house or 11th house it is really unnecessary to think about karaho bhavanasti in relation to the 6th house because the 6th house should be spoiled if the 6th house is spoiled it is good the 6th house also signifies the maternal uncle but there is huge confusion whether the 5th house signifies maternal uncle or 6th house signifies maternal uncle in certain original dictum the 6th house is said to be signifying maternal uncle i have not researched about the bhava related to the maternal uncle but i'm very sure mercury signifies the jiva karaka as maternal uncle however there is a lot of difference in opinion regarding the bhava that signifies the maternal uncle whether it is fifth house or sixth house well please try to understand this when saturn or mars reside in the sixth house it is said to be good doesn't mean that when a natural malafic resides in the sixth house it will bring deaths based on subatva and pabatva please make further predictions when venus resides in 7th house it does not spoil marital life in any way i have seen this in many natal charts what is the reason because venus will aspect the ascendant house from the 7th house many people assume that venus resides in the 7th house alone it is kalatra dosha it is not true without researching the rules you should not definitely follow these concepts to make the predictions one of my relatives has venus in the 7th house in his natal chart personality wise is more dark in complexion than me and his personality is not good but he has got a wife who is very beautiful and moreover she is a lady with all strong virtues do not blindly believe all the rules definitely you have to make research you have to definitely check in which house venus is if venus is pabatva in the 7th house definitely it will affect the status of the wife This is the reason I explain the natal chart of my relative where Venus is alone in the 7th house. My relative is natal of Cancer ascendant and in Capricorn Venus resides. Venus is alone in Capricorn whose dispositor is the most friendly planet to Venus and it is the Chara Rashi a movable sign. Having said this Venus from Capricorn aspects the ascendant house so it passes good light energy to the ascendant it makes the life of the person glorious when the ascendant is connected with the planets which has got good light energy the native will definitely have a clear mind and good thoughts if ascendant is aspected by natural benefits the native will enjoy great benefits if jupiter aspects the ascendant then the native will be a vvip venus is a natural benefic which has 50% strength of jupiter because venus is said to have blindness in one eye so for making nuances in the prediction definitely you must have the knowledge 
regarding the strength of the natural benefics and you should able to distinguish between the strength of Jupiter and Venus. In any case, when Venus is alone in the 7th house, it will not give Kalatra Dosha or it will not be a setback to the status of the wife. Definitely, it is not a minus point. In any case, if Venus is in conjunction with Mars, Saturn or Rahu, then the status of the wife will be spoiled. The status of the wife is completely spoiled if Venus is in connection with Rahu in the 7th house. It will affect the marital life, the character of the wife, everything will be spoiled. Take all the points regarding the 7th house as spoiled in this regard. In case if Jupiter and Venus are in conjunction, you have to understand in a different way. The effects will be bit contradictory. I have reiterated in many of my videos that Jupiter and Venus should not be in conjunction. I have mentioned in my videos that when Jupiter and Venus are in close conjunction, it will affect the marital pleasure or the progeny. In order to find which one will be affected, whether it is marital pleasure or progeny, you have to definitely Understand the role of these planets in the particular natal chart. Identify what is the role of Jupiter, what is the responsibility of Venus for that particular ascendant and whose dasha is going to happen. If Jupiter and Venus are in close conjunction within 8 degrees, definitely the negative effect will happen. If it is more than 22 degrees apart, then you don't need to consider this as a conjunction at all. If it is within 13 degrees, there will be effect, but it will be less. If Jupiter and Venus are within 8 degrees, you can definitely make the prediction that the native will face challenges either in marital pleasure or with progeny based on the ascendant. This will also vary based on whether it is Dasha of Jupiter or Venus. So when two natural benefits are in conjunction, based on the degree of conjunction, you have to make the predictions. If Jupiter and Venus are in conjunction within 8 degrees, it will give some contradictory results. This happens with the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus. Based on the cusp of the Bhava, you can make further predictions. Having said all these, when Venus is alone in the 7th house, it does not deliver any adverse effects. It is not Karaho Bhavanasti. If Venus is Pabatva, definitely you can expect bad effects. And if Venus is Subatva, it is extremely beneficial. Let me explain the 8th house. Saturn can reside in the 8th house, but it should not be Pabatva. It should not be in conjunction with Mars. Because Mars is a planet with which it does not have a good relationship. Saturn should not be in conjunction with Rahu in the 8th house. What will happen if Saturn and Mars are in conjunction in the 8th house? Saturn will get affected by Mars and it will reduce the longevity of the native. If Saturn resides in the 8th house alone, it gives great longevity. The native might suffer from any disease on long term, but the native will stay alive. Saturn in the 8th house even will make the native to limp, suffer from diseases, will affect the mobility, but it will give longevity to the native. It might even affect the intake of food or even intake of medicine. You know, it will go, it will move the native to such a poor status, but it will give longevity. Saturn in the eighth house can give only longevity and it will hurdle in all the other aspects. So please try to understand this. Saturn in the eighth house can only give longevity. Now let me explain the ninth house. When sun resides in the ninth house alone, 
It will not give such a setback in the status of the father. Again, try to bring the concept of Pabatva here. If son is Pabatva, it will definitely affect the Jeevakaraka father. If son is Pabatva residing in the ninth house, the native will not benefit anything from father despite the existence of father or the father will not be alive. The conjunction of sun and mass will not have huge impact. However, the conjunction of sun and Rahu or sun and Saturn will definitely affect the status of the father and not only the status, it will also affect the paternal properties and all the karaka related to father. If Jupiter resides alone in the ninth house, it is good. It is not Karaho Bhavanasti. If Jupiter resides in the ninth house, the person will be extremely honest. What is the reason? Because Jupiter will aspect the ascendant house by the fifth aspect. When Jupiter resides in the ninth house, native will definitely be honest and will have great moral values. This applies whatever ascendant it is. If Jupiter resides in ninth house, it will definitely give all the good moral values to the native without fail. Now, let me explain the tenth house. Saturn should not reside in the tenth house which signifies karma. Wherever Saturn resides, you have to keep an eye on that particular bhava. Saturn will affect in which bhava it resides. If sun resides in the 10th house and it is also Subhatva, it will bring great benefits to the native. Sun also gets directional strength in the 10th house. I often reiterate in my videos that it is very auspicious when the malefic planets get directional strength rather Stanabala. Sun gets directional strength when it resides in the 10th house. It gives good position. It will give dignity, it will give honor, fame, everything to the native. Sun in the 10th house signifies authoritative leadership position. Please don't bring the concept of Karaho Bhavanasti here. If Sun is Subhatma in 10th house, it brings more auspiciousness in the life of the native. If Sun is Pabatwa, what will happen? Of course, the king is a king, but the king will be a tyrant. When sun gets directional strength, which is more significant here, whatever challenges comes, sun helps the native to face it. Sometimes we see a person who can face whatever challenges come. In this way, sun will behave when it is in the 10th house with the strength of directional strength, Dikbala. When the conjunction of Sun and Saturn or Sun and Rahu takes place, Sun will make the native to stand against all the challenges. In recent videos, I am giving a lot of importance to the Dikbala, which is directional strength. Dikbala is one of the most significant strengths in Shadbala. I explained in many of my videos, Tanabala, Drikbala, Dikbala, and my followers started following and understanding these concepts. Many of the YouTubers also started publishing videos giving importance to directional strength of the planets. People understood how Dikbala is highly significant. And if a planet loses one strength, another strength can give a hand. Our human body itself is designed in such a way that we have certain important organs in two. If a person loses one eye, the other eye helps the vision. If one kidney is spoiled, there is another kidney to help the life of the person. I have explained how different strengths in Shadbala function. If sun in the 10th house and it is debilitated, I will not call the sun as debilitated planet because it has got directional strength in the 10th house. If a malefic planet has directional strength, it gains more strength. Let me give an example. 
let us take the ascendant as Gemini and Venus is in 4th house. Venus is in debilitation house. But don't take this as debilitation because it is in 4th house where it gains directional strength. Here in the house of Virgo, though Venus gets debilitated, it has got directional strength since the native is Gemini ascendant. I said if a person loses one eye, the other eye helps the vision. Many people survive on one kidney though another is spoiled. You can definitely find and arrive at these concepts if you have lateral thinking. When you understand these concepts in this fashion, it will open up your mind to explore more and you can make the finest predictions. Try to understand the directional strength of the sun in the 10th house. Let me give another example. The native is Capricorn Ascendant and sun is debilitated in the 10th house in Libra Rashi. Immediately you should not judge the strength of the sun to be very weak. Because sun gets directional strength in Libra for the native of Capricorn Ascendant. Because Libra is the 10th house to the Ascendant. I have researched such natal charts. A minister who is Capricorn Ascendant and whose son is debilitated in the 10th house in Libra became a minister. Can you guess during which Dasha it happened? He became a minister during Dasha of Sun. What do you say about this? Sun has lost its Tanabala. However, the directional strength helped the native to become a minister. This is the way you have to understand the concepts explained by me. I am really glad that many of my YouTube followers and students have started understanding the concept of Digbala after I have published many videos and I have written many many articles regarding the same. It is a good sign that many of my followers have started making predictions not only based on Stanabala and Rigbala but also using Digbala. Let me explain the 11th house now. Jupiter is the natural significator of the 11th house. As I already pointed out, Jupiter will not give any setback when it resides in the 11th house. Of course, Jupiter will not deliver any setback in the life of the native when it is alone in the 11th house. The position is considered to be good. When Jupiter resides alone in the 11th house, it will aspect the 3rd house, 5th house and also the 7th house to the ascendant, which is considered to be more auspicious. Jupiter will aspect the 3rd, 5th and the 7th house to the ascendant and based on the strength of the Jupiter, you have to make further predictions. When Mars and Jupiter reside in the 11th house which signifies respectively brother and wealth, it does not deliver any setback. Suppose if they are Subhatva then it will deliver benefits. Now let me explain the 12th house. When natural benefits reside in the 12th house it is good. 12th house is one of the significant house among all the houses in the natural zodiac. It is the house of expense. If a natural benefit resides in the 12th house, you are going to spend throughout your life and you will be able to spend throughout your life. Will you be able to spend throughout the life just by borrowing? No, it is not possible. You are definitely supposed to earn in order to meet your expenses. Based on lateral thinking, you definitely have to understand that when a natural benefit resides in the 12th house, it implies that you will have the earning capability in order to make expenses. When the 12th house is very strong in the natal chart, definitely the native will have a good income. Astrology is nothing but lateral thinking. If there is an exalted planet in the 12th house or if the 12th house lord is exalted or if 12th house is aspected by an exalted planet and if there is more Subhatva in the 12th house, 
it means the native is going to earn more it means the native is going to earn and spend more you have to identify the nature of the 12th house the connection of the 12th house with other planets you have to definitely identify whether the 12th house is permanently going to give this effect or if it is connected with the particular dasha you have to also check the connection of 6th house 8th house and 12th house the 8th house is not really such a worst case because it will make the native to go away from the place it will make the native to live in distant places having said this when saturn or when venus resides in the 12th house it will not deliver karaho bhavanasti but a planet that resides in the 12th house should not be pabatwa i hope you understand the concept of karaho bhavanasti i have explained elaborately about karaho bhavanasti and you don't need to worry when a planet that signifies the karaka resides in a particular house which matches the karaka of the house provided it is not pabatwa please keep writing your feedback to astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you